Hello out there. This is Leslie from the Live Animal Program, and I'm here with Tallulah. We call her Lulu. She is a Solomon Island skink. Such a gorgeous animal, right? So for today's lunchtime with the live animals, I brought you one of my favorite creatures in the collection. Actually, kind of one of my favorite creatures in the whole world. She's a really cool animal. They're so smart and so beautiful. And I wanted to take the time to kind of put on our nature eyes today and look closely at her body and see what we can figure out about her life. Now, she's a Solomon Islands skink. All right, and the first thing you probably want to ask me is, what's a skink and where are the Solomon Islands? <laughs> That's the two most common questions I get about her. So real quick, a skink is a type of lizard, all right? Lizards, like iguanas, like geckos, are reptiles with scaly skin. Now, our native skinks in California look like this. These are skinks. They have long, sleek bodies, they have smooth scales, they have tiny little feet, they look a lot like snakes, and they're often mistaken for snakes. They're also very fossorial around here, fossorial meaning living under the leaf litter and hiding. So um, that's what our native skinks do, okay? So the other thing you might wanna know is where are the Solomon Islands, and what's it like there? So real quick, here's a little map. You'll see the red around those islands, it's off the coast of New Guinea. It's off Australia, this little group of islands. And let me tell you, it's beautiful there. I mean, I've never been, I would love to go. But it's a gorgeous looking place, look at that. Like many tropical, subtropical islands, it is just so lush and green and beautiful. I would love to go there. Now, a girl like her is gonna do pretty well in a place like that, right? And you can tell that just from looking at her body, of course. First of all, her coloration is green, right? So where do you think she hangs out? On that beautiful tropical island? Does she hang out down in the leaf litter with other skinks? No. Or like our, like our native skinks? No. She's not gonna blend in well in the brown environment. She can hang out on the beach like I would? No, she's not gonna blend in that well either. She's going to be high up in the canopy where she can perfectly camouflage. Because, of course, look, the canopy is not just one color green, is it? It's lots of types of green, yellow green, blue green, blacks, right? So those are some wild skinks there, Solomon Island skinks there. And you can imagine if they were up in a canopy like that, you wouldn't see them if you were walking by. Even just looking at this headshot of Tallulah, Ooh, how pretty is that? She has so many colors. She's yellow, she's green, she's got orange. She's just so many colors, such a beautiful animal. Now up there, we talked about how she hides, right? Now that's called crypsis. Being able to hide is cryptic, right? So there's cryptic coloration, you know that as camouflage, okay? And there's cryptic behavior, right? So. The way she acts up in the treetops is another way to protect her. Do you notice how slow she is? She didn't go running off the stick. She's not a particularly fast animal here. That's part of their behavior. So I'm gonna set her on this branch here, and we'll see if she moves around a little bit for you. I'm gonna make sure it's real stable for her. There we go. So as she crawls around the trees, right, you can notice another part of her body too. Right on the ends of her toes there, she's got some pretty big claws. Lizards aren't really good at using their claws for defense. They're a little bit more for climbing in this case especially. You also notice this amazing tail, hence the name prehensile-tailed skink or monkey-tailed skink. Lulu's holding on right now with her tail on the back of this branch. Actually, I can't even lift it. They wrap it around so they have that as an extra limb to hold on in the trees. You know other prehensile animals. Can you think of one? Possums, right? Monkeys, right? Lots of prehensile animals out there. This is a really cool prehensile tail though because it can go in lots of different directions. So 
really important for her life up in the tree. She's got these claws, she's got this tail. So if there's any kids out there who want to pretend with me for a second, talk about the other way that she hides. So dig in your claws, hold on to that tree. Imagine you're wrapping your tail around the back of the tree to give you some extra support. She's doing a lot of tongue flicking too, right? Just like a snake does, lizards use their tongue to sense the world around them. She doesn't have a forked tongue. She's got a cute little tongue that looks like that. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> okay, so she's up in the trees, right? And that slow behavior, careful behavior, is also what helps her hide. From who? In this case, the main predators for these guys probably come from above, like a hawk or an eagle. So imagine if you're climbing along and you hear or see a bird of prey. <laughs> okay, that was a terrible hawk. You're going to freeze. Don't move a muscle. Don't move a muscle. That's part of her crypsis, her cryptic behavior, to move slow, to be able to freeze when there's danger around. So that's a little bit of her life. So what is she looking for up there? Because, of course, what all animals want in life, right, is safety. They also want food, right? So what's she going to find up there? Now, one thing you can't necessarily tell just from looking at her body, right? So far, we've been able to tell she's arboreal. She lives in the trees because she's got these claws. She's got the prehensile tail. One thing you can't necessarily tell, if you happen to notice their sharp teeth, you might assume that she is a carnivore. But you'd be wrong. These guys are such rule breakers. They're so different than most of the lizards. Most of the lizards that live safe here in California, in SoCal, they eat meat, right? Uh, and they also live on the ground. So she's already kind of breaking two rules there. So here we have what she really wants to eat up high in the trees because there's a lot of it to fill that great big belly. If she was just eating bugs, she would clean out that tree pretty quickly and have to go find another tree. They like to be in one place, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But what's most abundant up there in the treetops? Of course, leaves. We'll see if she wants to eat. I don't know. She, she usually does. <laughs> she likes to have a full belly. These guys eat leaves and flowers and sometimes fruits that they find up in the treetops. Today I have some grape leaves for her. <laughs> She's tongue flicking, as you can see. Yeah, she'll take a bite, no problem. Now you say, Leslie, why does she have sharp teeth if she is an herbivore? Of course, she has to get those leaves down. Does she have scissors to help her cut down those leaves? No, she does not, but she has really sharp teeth. You can even see the little holes that she left. So she can rip down these thick leaves and fill up that big belly. Now the last thing I want to tell you about that makes these guys so really special is, remember I said how they like to kind of stick to one tree? That's because they live in family groups. Right? Have you ever heard of a lizard that lives in family groups? Certainly not the ones around my house. They're pretty solitary. So these guys live in family groups and take care of each other and take care of their young. They like to find these old growth trees with these big hollows and hang out in there. And it's particularly helpful that they do have sort of a big pear-shaped body. This is a rubber one, by the way. <laughs> I would never hold a real lizard like this. Big body because they have big babies. I'm talking big. A fifth of mama's body weight. That's like us giving birth to a kindergartner. <laughs> really, really big babies. So any animal that invests that amount of energy in their babies, making them so big, like us humans, they're going to take care of them, right? That goes across the board. Now here's the cool thing. Looking at all this diversity, this very special sort of rule breaker lizard, it's really cool. Just in and of itself, it's really cool. But we at the museum also like to look at diversity to help give us a window into the past. As a matter of fact, our amazing paleontologist, Dr. Luis Chiafe, looked at Solomon Island skinks, these, lizard, these lizards, when he was drawing some conclusions about Polly the plesiosaur from our dinosaur hall. There she is. 
who has a really big fetus. And he said to himself, hmm, big baby, big investment. I wonder if these guys took care of their babies too. How cool is that, right? You can look at modern animals and be awed by the diversity, the strangeness out there, but you can also have a window into the past. So I hope you enjoyed Lunchtime with Lulu, and I hope you join me again. We'll try to have these a little bit more often, and I hope everyone's taking care out there.